It's all connected. 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 Dot XYZ on this Monday, March 8, 2021. And I say we, that would be me, Grimner, and my uh, lovely ghost. Ooh, so, so I just got a scary thought. Okay. What if the epicenter of all that is connected is up Hillary Snatch? Oh. Oh. That, I know. that would be bad. That would be very bad. <laughs> thank you, thank you, South Park, for always reminding me of Hillary Snitch. Oh yeah, aren't they just awesome for doing that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is episode uh, thirty-three. That's the Illuminati episode of It's All Connected Ooh. program, and the title of today's program is "The World Is Suffering from PTSD." And in case you're you wondering, the um, Description I have here, <laughs> which, uh, which you can buy or not, uh, of PTSD is, PTSD is now officially characterized by three sets of symptoms. These include reliving the event through intrusive memories and dreams, emotional avoidance such as steering clear of reminders of the trauma, and detaching emotionally from others, and hyperarousal that ca that causes sufferers to startle easily, sleep poorly, and be on alert for potential threats. These problems must uh, last for a month or more for someone to qualify for the PTSD label. And uh, you know what I say about labels? Fuck labels. Um, no, where the ones where the ones you want with pride, though. Choose your own, but where you know, if you prefer. Uh, anyway, so I apparently don't have uh, PTSD because um, I I do not startle easily. I almost don't startle at all. Uh, I do not sleep poorly. I sleep like a, a rock, a log. I don't know, whatever. Uh, not like a baby, because babies don't actually sleep very well. You know, they get up every, like, two hours and cry and poop and want food. Uh, and alert for potential threats. Yeah, I don't really care so much about potential threats. Um, no, I would I, say you're pretty clear of the uh, collective effects of PTSD. And I'm not sure what hyperarousal is, but it sounds kind of interesting. <laughs> 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 give me, give me some of that hyper arousal, oh baby, <laughs> hyper, uh, <laughs> hyper arouses me. Um, anyway, how how do all the folks over here in the? Oh wow, it's uh, uh that's funny because then when you look up hyper arousal, right? Uh huh. It leads back to PTSD. Interesting, interesting. Hyper arousal is a specific cluster of symptoms associated well, with PTSD. See, that's not the kind of arousal I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I didn't say heightened state of anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Uh, anyway, howdy to all the folks over here in the chat today. We got a whole bunch of folks over here. Come on over, join the chat. If you're not over here on reallibertymedia.com or rlmradio.xyz, just navigate your way over there, and you can join in and talk to all the great folks that are here in the chat that will be commenting or just talking about other random things on, 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 from our show. So uh, head on Ooh. over, head on over. Um, now, now, um, being as uh, we've stated that the the world is suffering from PTSD, um, uh, tell me your best uh, reason uh, for for bringing that concept to me well uh i've been no well i haven't concluded it yet okay i've been pondering the the um thesis of it for many years oh okay see see Cirque, uh suggested to me this morning the the topic of 
is the world suffering from PTSD? And I, I decided to just go ahead and make it uh, definite that, yes, the world is suffering from PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe we could, you know, say the Western, modernized, Nordic, whatever, kind, how you will specify civilized societies. Civilized, and civilized, there's another interesting word, ain't it? Yeah. Because uh, civilized societies tend to start wars, which I don't really um, consider very civilized. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, they, I, they I, I consider that to be anti-civilized. Uh, they also tend to um, increase, um, uh, what is it? You know, the the gap between who has a lot and who has a little, and oh. uh, and tend to um, reward hoarding and greed. That would be other characteristics of civilized society, wouldn't it? I guess so, yeah, yeah. I mean, those those that have uh, abundance of pretty much everything um, rise to the you know power positions, and those of us with uh, basically nothing um, stay where we are with basically nothing. <laughs> I've, I've read a lot about uh, poorer, so-called poorer society, as to uh, our standards. And one thing that people always describe is this um, lack of hoarding and greed. Well, if they have nothing to hoard, I mean. Then they tend to share whatever they do have. Okay. While those of us in the world who has the most tend to hoard and be greedy. Right. Which I find that kind of funny that uh, civilized societies tend to reward that kind of antisocial behavior, right? Um, yeah, I guess if you consider it antisocial, I don't know if that is. Um, oh, I do. Oh, okay. As a social creature in a in a herd, which is humans, it's very antisocial to be to hoard and be greedy if people around you have nothing. Okay. But um, yeah. then. Then why do you the people... You never see that in a flock of animals, would you? I, I don't know. You'd never see one wolf who's hoarded all the meat to themselves and won't let others eat? That's well, not very good uh, for the herd or the uh, flock and the society or the group. Though. Yeah, but, but again, I, I don't know. I mean, um, if you look at like uh, a pack of lions, what are, they, what are they called? Not a pack, but whatever. A group of lions... Yeah. <laughs> that I don't recall the proper name for the group. Anyway, um, if they take down, say, an antelope, right? Yeah. A pride. Thank yeah. you, very, Vinny. Uh, pride of lions. Yeah. Uh, so, so if they take down the antelope, the 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 leader of that pride gets to eat first. Yeah, but he doesn't hoard half the antelope away, so he has for thirty months, and the rest of them will starve. Because that would be idiotic. Then he would have to hunt for himself after a couple of days. Oh, that's true. He eats, and then he makes sure that the whole flock is fed. Because that's how they're going to catch another antelope. Right, yeah. The other thing is ridiculous. It's antisocial. Okay, well now tell me this. You you You, you have a dog, right? Yeah. Have you ever had two dogs? No. Okay. Well, my experience with two dogs <laughs> in the in the house is well, whoever was the first dog I had, uh, then I got a second dog, and the first dog becomes very selfish and greedy, and because they're, and, they're and, domesticated and jealous. <laughs> yeah. They're domesticated. They're living under the same antisocial society things that we are. They're domesticated into the same shit that we are. So 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 not not only did the did the first dog become very protective uh of of her food and snacks whatever was given. Um she she would she would go into the other dog's food and and eat it up too. <laughs> yeah. mm. So, yeah. So the, and so that's because they're domesticated, you say? I would say so, yeah. They they have uh, been put into this um 
the very same as we are, where suddenly something is scarce and you have to um scarce. My, I'm sorry. And you have to mind your resources and plan for them. Lions don't plan for them. Right? I guess not. Yeah. And Dogs is, in the wild don't plan yeah, for them either. Yeah, they I mean they don't know where their next uh meal is coming from, whereas in your house they know that every morning or evening uh, yep. they they expect a bowl full of food there. <laughs> yeah. Because the big the big lion knows he's fucked alone. Uh, yeah. It's his job to make sure that his group of mates are healthy and fit. True, true, that's true. Okay, so lions don't have PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, now, so. do you do you know personally anybody? Um, Experience with the typical classical PTSD. Uh, yeah, I do. I okay. Do. Yeah. And, and and how how do they act? Where where are these people at? Are they like at work or family members? No, or? no. I have an old friend, and he's been sitting in in uh, in his apartment um, for ten, twelve, fifteen years now. Okay. Never getting out. All right. Well, maybe he's just like me, and he doesn't like people. No, I would assume that you uh, uh, you make sure you have food. You you plan everything. You take a bath once in a while. You clean out your <laughs> trash. You, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm I fine. hope so. I, I'm fine. With, I yeah. I, I shower daily. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean you know uh, I don't want to smell or be sticky or well whatever happens after people don't shower for a few days. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're talking years here. He didn't shower for years. No, no, no. no. Well, that's just freaking nasty. He's 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 got PTSD. I know, but how does that keep you from showering? Highly depressed. He's highly depressed. And so that makes you not shower? Yeah, his mind went zoom. Uh, if I couldn't shower for a week, I'd be very depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I hope you'll never understand what he's going through. I, I, I gotta get this stank off me! <laughs> <laughs> he don't care, though. He doesn't care about anything. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, Moose is saying that depression can be caused by PTSD. And I think that mm -hmm. that may be true, and I think it works the other way around as well. Uh, P PTSD yeah. can cause depression. Um, and yeah. and I, I, don't, I don't know all of the uh, type of events that may cause PTSD. Um, well, that was interesting because we, we used to, we usually define it as, as a reaction to some event, right? Right. Some trauma. Right. But what if you're just, what if you just grew up and you're living in a constant traumatic stress environment? Then yeah. you would get PTSD too, right? I guess. I mean, I, I, I think my childhood was pretty much a stressed out environment because um, my family sucked. Um, but, <laughs> and, 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 but, but, I mean, that's to, you know, I think much lesser degree than... You know, people that, you know, they, they, they send these young kids off to, to go kill people uh, that they don't know for reasons that are unknown. Uh, and, and I think that that that's definitely a, a PTSD generator. Um, mm. And so, I mean, that would be something or, uh, you know, if you're you watch somebody that you love being killed, that that probably caused trauma. Um yeah, so yeah. Th those kind of things. But, um, oh, I, you, you know, I, I watch movies quite often because there's uh, – and, and some, some of the movies they'll show like a family or a mother or father, whatever. Um, and, and usually it happens at the very beginning of the movie their child gets killed by, by in some way or another, right? Yeah. And, and then the whole thing is, you know, them being all stressed out about – 
about you know their their kids you know and they and they can't like even live together anymore the husband and wife uh, because they're they're so upset over uh, over the fact the loss of their child and, and and it always confuses me cuz see I I never had kids I never wanted kids I I don't like kids <laughs> <laughs> Well I don't uh, <laughs> You don't like humans, though. Well, I, I, that's true. That's true too. Uh, but to at what point do they become um, acceptable or agreeable to you? Well, Which well, age well, do you well, go? Okay, now you're human and not just a kid. Well, once you can logic and reason with them, I, I, that, that then it's a little better. And, and if, if they accept or, or reject, I should say, the logic. So around fifty-five years or something. Yeah. Like that. No, <laughs> well, it should be, you know, uh, even in the younger ones, you know, six, seven, eight years old, they should be able to understand what they're being told and uh, whether or not they accept or reject that is up to them. Um, mm. Some do, some don't, of course. Some some of them, like you said, they, it may take them till they're 55 or 75 or 90 or dead. Um, yeah. but, but before that occurs, uh, but... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, you know, to me, you know, the, the little ones, the infants and toddlers and such, that just crying and crap for no reason that you could, uh, you know, determine, which you see a lot of parents doing that, too. They they can't figure out why the hell the kid's crying. You know, they're doing, they, they do everything. They, they they put new diapers on it or feed it or, or rock it in their arms or whatever, and the kid still cries. Uh, that, 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 that would drive me absolutely insane. Um, to have to deal with that on a daily basis, uh, <laughs> that would cause me that would cause me stress, stress and trauma. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, yeah. But some people I like that. Some people really. Would, some people seem to really like that, though. You know. I think it triggers something deeper in you. I think you get biological help from your own body in doing that. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And, you know. The, the act and, and uh, the the very, you know, process and the act of giving birth and becoming a parent triggers a lot of hormones. In the, a lot of those hormones make you able to uh, cope with stuff. Yeah, I, I think it breaks your brain. Uh, because suddenly, now that now that you have a child... Uh, you're you're like the most important person in the world. Whatever you're going anywhere with your kid, at least uh, that, that's my experience. Oh, as a mother, she let her through, coming through. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I was talking about the kind of hormones that uh, makes you able to get up after two hours of sleep and take care of nursing a baby and stay awake for many hours from that before you can take a nap again. That's the kind of hormones that just kicks in when you go through the whole parenting thing. Okay. And and you well, you, you you've not been you're not, you don't have any children, right? No. So, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 you know, uh to me it's hard it's hard to comprehend um the parents mentality. Um uh, <laughs> it, it is. It really is. I, I just I just can't get it. You know, like okay, so your kid died 5 years ago or whatever and you're still you can't get over it. And it's like, get over it. <laughs> I don't know. But, but yeah, well, that's the thing that happens though, right? When you hit that uh, sudden trauma. And some people, because I, I was reading the last couple of hours about the PTSD, and it turns out that about 10 to 15% of the uh, of a normal group of people will get PTSD from a traumatic experience and yeah. the others won't. Okay. Well, I can understand things like, you know, um, if, if you are directly responsible for the death of another person, that the guilt from that would, would cause you to probably never be able to get over it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, if it was, you know, a, yeah, I mean, you weren't doing it as a self-defense type thing. Um, mm. You know, you you just like you're in war and you shoot the the kid across the 
field or what I don't, I don't know uh, however it mm. works but uh, um yeah but I, I think mean, a trauma like that can send you into like a depression spiral where you just go into like a chemical biological loop that keeps reinforcing itself so you just spirals into more and more depression and you really can't do anything about it unless something or someone comes and grabs you and pulls it out Right. Then you and have some radical. There has to happen something radical for you to, you know. Yeah. Well, because you see, to me, it's like, all right. Um, if if you do that, I mean, if you go there, you're told to go there, uh, and 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 kill these people because you know you gave your life to some military group of idiots, um, mm. and, and now you've gone and done exactly what they said, and you've got to think to yourself. I killed this guy because I was ordered to, but it was still my choice to pull that trigger or whatever it was you did. And I, at that point, would consider myself to be a monster, a non-human. Um, and so when somebody says, it wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. <laughs> but just how many, because the way that uh, adults treat children, right? Yeah. I mean, they just yell and scream at children, and, and oh, yeah. some of them use violence, man, on children, which is just insane. Right. Well, and I, you got I, teachers that are screaming at children and yelling in their faces. Just imagine how many of of us of us who grew up that way, right? Yeah. Of 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 kids in this society and the ones who are growing up, how many of us developed PTSD from being treated like that when we were just five, six years old? Right, yeah. So I get stopped down, told you're nothing, you know, learn this and stop thinking. Yeah, a lot of really idiotic grown ups that fuck up children, right? Sure, yeah. And, and, you know, as far as that goes, I mean, there's like no examination you have to take or instruction you get on how to be a parent, right? It's just no, like, I think something happens in the head of a five-year-old or a six-year-old and their parents suddenly beat them. I mean, the ones that's supposed to give them love and, and support and be safe haven start beating people, their kids, man. Yeah, yeah. And that's way normal. Way, Yeah, way too normal, sure. Way too normal. Or as, as Donna points out here in the chat, uh, rape victims and victims of childhood sexual abuse also suffer yeah. from PTSD and yeah. victims of police abuse and violence, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, and those are the ones we we're, we're used. To. Yeah, those are the extreme ones. But how you know? Are there even children in the so-called civilized world that doesn't get yelled and screamed at by insane adults? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, I mean, you know, even like. Um, you know, a lot of parents, there's a lot of the schools, and I don't know how it is today, but uh, back in the day, uh, you know, in the schools, they were allowed to beat you if if you, yeah. if they felt like it. Um, and, you know, they you said, see these people that got beaten by their teachers who can't get enough of how teachers should beat children because that worked for me, damn it. Right, yeah. They, uh, they, no, they, not really, man. You know, if you if you were to get sent to the principal's office and the, the principal had a big old paddle in there, he'd smack your yep. ass with, mm -hmm. and, that, and that was normal. That was just just the way it was. Um, yeah. That that this guy was allowed to, or if you went to like a, a Catholic school, and the nurse would come around and smack your fingers with the damn ruler. Um, yeah. I can only say thank you, mom, and thank you, dad for never beating me, for never using violence to impose an opinion or a direction on me. But uh, I can only imagine because it's way normal. So they, uh, any of, could scream, my dad would yell at me though. So is there a um recovery method for people suffering PTSD? Um uh, uh well, if you if you well, it's more like the side effects that you treat. So you get anxieties, and then you can get you know, then they give you medicine for anxieties, or you get depressed, and they get you medicine for depression, or uh, you can't sleep, then they medicate your sleep, right? Yeah, well, that's you pretty know, much how they're treating it today. It's just that they're numbing down the symptoms. Uh, well, you, you I, I would say that the good way to deal with it would be meditation. That's and mindfulness. One. Sure, sure. Well, you know, you know what they do here as far as medicating 
uh, PTSD victims in uh, New Mexico. What? Weed. They give them weed. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would say weed would, I would say weed with some mindfulness and a meditation coach wouldn't be a bad combo. Meditation coach? Somebody to teach you, you know, how to how to get mindful. Just somebody to take a walk with you once in a while and show you how to do it. Okay. Yeah. If you got a chattering mind, which PTSD people do, right? Right. Full of anxiety and chatter all the time. Yeah, you might need help to numb, you know, quiet it down. Well, I, I you know, I, I have uh, several voices in my head, <laughs> but I just consider them to be company, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't say that you you don't have a chatter mind. You don't have a paranoid chatter mind, though. Right? No, no, not paranoid chatter mind. Just you know, whatever. Just, just uh, uh, helpful voices in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went, I went to a, I went to a mindful coach. I still take a walk once in a while with him. Oh, really? And he taught me a lot about meditation and how to meditate and and. Uh, how to find mindfulness and understand that thoughts and, and feelings are just that. They just pop out of nowhere. They don't belong to anything. And if you don't engage them, they just go away again. Yeah. Um, well, tell, tell me, I didn't tell, know that. I had to learn not to engage them. Now, tell, tell me this, and I don't know if we've talked about it or somebody else I was talking about with it, but whatever. Um Every, everything I read, you know, about meditation, which I read it occasionally, various articles or posts about it, um, they, they, the first thing they say is to clear your mind. No. And to me, it's like, how the hell do you do that? That's the end goal. <laughs> that's the goal that you're trying that, to achieve. See, see, that's, well, no, that's like the first thing you do is clear your mind. And then, and then they just go on. Well, and they never explain. How do you do that? How do you clear your mind? Because there's no. Uh, I I I don't know that. I don't know how to do that. I've never I've never met anybody or heard a diet or a meditation that started with that. Oh. Because because meditation is about trying to reach that. Not necessarily reaching it, or not necessarily. It's it's not a. Uh, you can do it wrong or right. It's a process. It's a it's a state you're in. Okay. With the whole trick is that you're you're gonna get caught by a thought or a feeling while you're trying not to. Meditation is you trying to observe what goes on with all those thoughts and feelings and not engaging them but observing them. Okay. So, so the thing is that when you then engage during a meditation, because I, I do that all the time. I'm not a very focused person. I think our radio show proves that, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole trick is, though, that once you do it, once you figure, okay, wow, I wandered and my mind got caught in this thought or this feeling and it wandered with it, then just bring your mind back to your breathing and back to your to your center or what kind of meditation you're doing and let it go. Okay. So if somebody has PTSD, say for uh, killing people in some war, um, or just from growing up no, with no, fucking well, idiot grown-ups yelling at you all the time. I want I want to be uh, more more specific on this. Okay, okay. you want to be uh, yeah okay. Be, because okay so some 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 kid you know because they ship kids mm -hmm. off to foreign mm -hmm. lands to to murder innocent people, um, and the the foreign lands I guess have the innocent people trying to kill them as they're coming there as invaders. So anyway, yeah. You know, so you go over there and, and you and you shoot a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Peasant killing people, a peasant in the name of kings, right? Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Okay, so so you have that going on in your head. Uh, okay, I I killed uh, th this person or this group of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I drone attacked this the shit out of this village. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whichever. Um, 
so how how is how can they get past that via meditation? I think you have to learn to forgive yourself. And you can do that through meditation. And and you know, just like you read the symptoms, right? Right. Trying to, you know, getting a you know, um using apathy or distancing yourself from what happened. So uh -huh. what what you have to if you have to start with sitting in what is uh, no, no. to truly understand what is the uh, sum of what is. Well, let, let me just say this and see if it makes yes. sense to you. I'm very enthusiastic about apathy. <laughs> I understand that, but it will keep you away. If you have PTSD and you can't sleep at night, you can't do it, and 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 but your and your solution is not to deal, but to run away with what's keeping you awake, or to distancing yourself because you can't be in it because the emotions are too big. Yeah. You want to use meditation and mindfulness to be able to sit in it. Okay. And just be with what is. So in your meditations, do you ever use um, mind-altering agents to assist you? No, I don't. No? No. Okay. I don't. I've Good. never, I, um, I don't know how to do that. I've never, you know, the few times I've tried those drugs, it didn't work. No, I'm talking. And, about, I'm talking about weed or hash or. Oh, I can meditate on uh, on weed. I don't always though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, certainly um, LSD. Sometimes I just do like a two two minute meditation to just let go of something. Okay, a two minute. Do you have a thought, like a thought that keeps popping up, or emotion that keeps popping up that you know is not going to lead anywhere where you want to go with? I, I, it keeps I've, popping up. I've never heard of a two minute meditation, but I like the concept. Oh, well, they don't have to be that much longer. You're, you're, I mean, just do like a body scan or a or a uh, stay in your breath for two minutes, just observing your own breath for two minutes. Okay. Well, you'll have to teach me how to do that two-minute meditation. I, I like that idea. Yeah. That, that's like, that's quick. Yeah. yeah. Let go and find another focus and get on with, with uh... the work. But the whole, because the whole idea for me is the mindfulness, though, right? Okay. To understand that thoughts and feelings, are they come from nothing, they mean nothing unless you engage them. And you are the, you mean, you're the being that creates them, so you're in control of which of them are going to become something because you engage them. Okay. All right, let's go to um, the topic. The <laughs> oh, okay, let's now, go to the topic. I know we're a little over halfway through. The world <laughs> is suffering from PTSD. Yeah, I would say that it is certainly living and reacting like it is. And, and is this, um, do you believe this is from the uh, the corona nonsense going on worldwide? or? No, I think it's way older. I don't think the corona did anything good. I think that's just an added on trauma. But I think they added trauma to this for many, 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 many years. Okay. But do you think that there's people out there that were living normal, healthy, mentally healthy lives that were suddenly thrust into all this corona bologna. What, what the hell? Not uh, really. Uh, and, and now they, they, they've they experienced trauma because they, their, their, their way of life was so interrupted uh, by, by the things going on due to government edicts and orders and crap like that. Uh, and and the way their their you know friends family and neighbors uh, were reacting to to this craziness. Um, that... I would I would say Grimnir that in order for it to have the the way the collective both where I am and I assume where you are has yeah. reacted to this corona. Yeah. I would say that um, a group of people that react that way. Uh, would have to be in a pretty low fucking place to begin with. 
Okay. Um, I mean, the reaction I'm seeing, the the because the first reactions were really. You remember the first month? I do. People were like um, sanitizing everywhere, talking about gloves. Uh, uh, they weren't hugging people. They weren't doing this and that. They were just completely traumatized, right? I, that's what I remember seeing. A lot of people that was just reacting like out of, st you know, stressed out. And, and buying toilet paper. And I would say, I would say that <laughs> in order to get to that behavior, you would have to be pretty stressed out when once the corona hit you. Because a normal, balanced person, mm -hmm. which, who are in a good, healthy, mental place, right, wouldn't react like that to something they saw on the news. Can, can you suffer from PTSD while the trauma is still going on? Yeah, I would say so. Well, from what I've been reading, there is a general consensus that there don't even have to be a trauma for you to have post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. Well, then it's got a terrible name. I mean, if you, I could, know. If you could suffer I know. from it while it's still going on, it's not post. And if you could do it no. without trauma, it's not post-traumatic. Um. <laughs> well, then, then it would just be stress disorder, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Traumatic so. stress disorder. Yeah, or non-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, but let's do it. There's a test here, right? So let's find the 17 uh, test signs that you have this, right? Right. So the first one is I've I've had trouble focusing on things like reading or conversations. So I'm going to skip TV shows because who can't focus on a TV show that's made to distract you, right? But well, would you yeah. say as a general thing, people who live in our societies have a have trouble focusing on reading yeah, yeah. well 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 uh, and tell me this um do you, uh, you uh, all right well I'll, I'll tell you this not you mm -hmm. tell me this but tell me this. oftentimes when i'm watching a uh, movie or a tv show whatever i miss half the show because my mind is busy doing something else yeah and, and so um who can't focus on a TV show? Well, I often can't. Um. <laughs> so I checked that off as several times, right? That was question one. Yeah. Okay. Memories of the trauma came to mind at unwanted moments. Okay. Well, I don't have trauma, but my mind does other things on it. Well, own. what if the trauma is fucking state forcing all kinds of shit down your throat? Yeah. Or treating you like a bleh. Yeah, they really don't though. I mean, they they have all these you know things to to force you into certain ways, but yeah. I don't really yeah. pay attention to them. Um, no, but I have memories of of adults as a kid yelling at me. I have memories of uh, trained personnel telling me to do shit for. I I would say yeah, memories of of that kind of force from state comes to mind at unwanted moments. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just going to say a few times then. And no, I, I mean, I, I, I remember very strongly um, various things that pigs did uh, when when I was a kid, uh, adolescent, whatever, um, uh, to other people that I saw that I, that, that, that caused me stress, I guess, in the way that, how are they allowed to do that? How, how are they allowed just go out and harass and abuse regular folks uh, and, you know, to people my age that just happened to, to be whatever uh, brought yeah. on the ire of these, you know, jackbooted assholes. Um, so, you know, I like seeing, you know, I come out of like a club, which was, you know, an under eight, you know, under 21 club where you go and watch concerts or whatever. And, and, I, and I see a, a cop out there grab this kid who just came out of the show just like I just did. For, for no reason, the kid was just walking, and he grabbed the kid by 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 the by the shirt and slammed him up against the wall and started yelling about him about shit, and and, and there was nothing I could do, of course, you know, being like fifteen, mm -hmm. fifteen or sixteen. Um, that, no, you just you're being just learned there. Yeah, I'm just sitting there, you know, in in stunned astonishment 
Um, yeah. That that this could actually happen and go on. Um, yeah. You don't think that was traumatizing to your being? It was. And to that kid's being? Oh, absolutely to him, for sure, much more than me. Because yeah. um, I mean, it was happening to him, and I was just observing it. Um, hmm? I, you know, and then after that, I got over it pretty quick when the well, one of the girls from the band that uh, I was watching came outside and started hitting on me. <laughs> but you learned something that evening that you you had some memory that got coded into your system. It, it, absolutely, I, I remember vividly to this day, and I was like fifteen at the time. Yeah, and you know that was uh, yeah. many couple years ago. <laughs> Two hundred and seventeen years ago, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, oh. um, but yeah, no, okay. So, well, let's go through the test. Okay, go ahead. Go, go. Well, step three is uh, parts of uh, traumatic events are hazy or difficult to remember. I, I could see that you'd want to block some of that stuff out. Yeah. Uh, whether you want, I, think whether, you, whether I don't you, remember you, every time some adult started screaming at me when I was a kid because I had a different opinion than them. Sure. No. I. I you know. I. I. I remember certain things. You know that that happened that uh, seemed unfair, unjust uh, when, when I was a child, you know, because of course they never listen to kids anyway. Uh, most adults, not really. I mean, they pretend like they're listening to you, but they still got to go ahead and do whatever, regardless of what you say about it. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, but uh, yeah. the, the more, I guess, what would be traumatic ones, I don't recall um, from that time. No. Well, step four is I've been avoiding things like places, people, or events that make me think about the trauma. Okay. I, I I'd say that's very clear, true. I, I avoid places, people, and events, but not because of... <laughs> uh, you avoid certain people just because they wear a certain badge. Because, um, because that badge traumatized you, didn't it? At some point or several points. Yeah, no, like, I, just us. just yeah, just, just their the way they can screw with you and get away with it. Yeah, no, that yeah. that that yeah. that causes me angst. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to go there. I don't want to go there because it makes you uncomfortable and and uh, just no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. Uh, I have felt rushes of anger or irritability. Ir irritability. Yeah, I would say that's a general feeling on in you know civilized societies, isn't it? Right. I mean, you know, like every day when I'm reading through various stories, and there's always stories every day that about about uh, those in quote authority unquote mm -hmm. um, abusing everybody else or as many other people as they can. Um, and, yeah. And feeling just totally justified in their actions. Yeah, yeah they so, are, though. So, yeah. yeah I avoid in this uh, uh, insane, traumatizing discourse, they are. Right. That's the ins insanity of it. Sure, sure. I would say as a general rule, people in... Uh, uh, I, I don't know, in my in the society I live in, and I think it's the same for where you are to an even bigger degree, are living in rushes of anger and irritability. Yeah. Well, I mean, oftentimes, like I said, when I, I'll, I'll see a whole bunch of different stories about, you know, cops doing nasty stuff to other people. And um, a lot of times I'll just, I'm not going to read that. I'm not going to read that. Cause, uh, no. Yeah, I, I, I don't need it. I've... <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There, there is there is avoidance of uh, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah, because yeah. you're traumatized. That's the insane. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize oh, I, I was I traumatized, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've been on edge much more than normal, particularly when there've been other people around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the general thing, right? The stress right. level. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been unable to connect to my emotions, such as not being able to laugh or cry or feel affection for those around me. Oh. Well, I laugh at stuff, things, mm. everything. 
But yeah, I don't really connect with people much, you know. No. How about you? Do you connect with people? A lot. I thought you did. And, and, and I I wouldn't check this at all. I I both laugh laugh and cry and I love very deeply. Uh, okay. I I can sit down and cry. Now is is this is this uh, are these test steps in that article you gave me? No, this is from uh, Mind Diagnostics. Oh, okay. But I was going to say, let's try to do it on um, society, right? right? Let's see if society, if our society suffer from PTSD. So I've been trying to score them. We've just reached step seven. And I would say people are generally good at laughing and crying, so I'm going to give this a low one. Okay. Okay, well, and here's step eight. I've been trying to avoid thinking about the trauma or the way it makes me feel. I would say a lot of escapism and, and avoidance, right? Sure, sure. I, I mean, you know, that's what, what how else you got, I mean, there, there's no way to go backward in time and change it, so uh, avoiding no. things that remind you of it would be, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I'm going to give it a high one. Uh, I became frightened, angry, upset when I remembering the trauma. Yeah, we do. We just witnessed it, right? Yeah, yeah. You just took us back to one event with these fucked hearts, and you get angry. Yeah. It's fucking A. And I share your anger. I wasn't even there. I share your anger because I'm as traumatized by those goons as, as the rest of people, right? Right. So I share that anger, man. Well, I've experienced the racing pulse, excessive sweating, shaking, or chills when remembering a trauma. Okay. Um, I think society as a whole is doing that, yeah. They yeah. That. Right. Which, ex which explains, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, Karen attitudes going on yeah. out there. Uh, they're all freaked out. Oh, this guy doesn't have a mask. You know, he's, yeah. wa he's yeah. walking around with his face bare. Um <laughs> Yeah, because the article I sent you, they used the um, 9-11 attack as an example of how many people got PTSD from that. Uh, yeah, right. And and most of that was due to the uh, government spewing out fear and and uh, the media spewing out fear and hatred uh, to get you yeah. to, in order to, to back uh, their global war on terror. Um, yeah. they, they needed to, to, to fear you into a, a place. That you were just saying, yeah, 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 just go kill anybody that might be threatening me ever. Um. <laughs> I would say, let's take, okay, step 11. I've been hyper alert, particularly in situations with lots of people around. I would say that's a general rule again. If you put people together, people get hyper alert. Paranoid. Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't know yeah. who these people are. You can't maybe, I can't trust them or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, memories of the trauma were so vivid, I felt like they were reoccurring. I don't know about that. Do people relive? Yeah, they do, right? Yeah, well, it's like I said earlier about that cop slamming that kid, yeah. kid against the wall. I mean, I I can see that in my head and, and relive that moment. It's very simple to like, do. And... I, I have to, like, when you're out driving in a car and you see a cop car in the rear view and you just see that one, they blink once. I would assume everybody gets, ooh. Yeah, yeah, you're a little anxious at that point for sure. Yeah. And, and you want to do something to be away from that cop. Yeah. You know, whether, um, it's, takes I felt, a, it, 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 whether it takes the next exit or slow down mm -hmm. a bit so he passes you or whatever. I've, I bet there are people who start hyperventilating and shit from that. Just because they're so traumatized by these authorita. Especially if you got weed in the car. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't have that plant. No, Those are no. leaves, mister. Absolutely. That's Mother Nature. You're not allowed to have Mother Nature with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the insane part of it. There are people being beat up right now over a plant. What the heck? And locked, locked away for years and years. Mm. Yep. Just insane. Yeah. Well, step 13 is I have felt detached from friends and family or those closest to me. Okay, well, I, I think, um, well, at least in this corona era, people, era, 
error era. Um, <laughs> a lot of people. The family are... closer where you are too. What's that? Here, the families are getting a lot closer. Oh, I don't know about that, um, but you know they're they're not allowed to go out and do things, have fun, uh, hang out with people. All they could do is hang out in their homes. So, um, and We're then, then some, some 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 of the crap they pushed out is like. You know, even if they're family members, if they don't live with you, they can't come and see you. Um, oh. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know how that, that doesn't really drive closeness. No, I'll just I'll put that in a neutral zone. OK. That OK, step 14. I'm not interested in doing things or going places that I like to do or go to before the trauma. Oh, OK. Um. Oh, no. I think people still want to do those things. They just, um, you know, they can't. They're not allowed to. At least, you know, I'm talking about this corona crap again. Um, so I, I think people still want to do the things that they used to do and like to do, uh, but they can't. Do you, think, do you think if children wasn't told to stop sillying around with paint and start uh, uh, doing construction, you think more people would, you know, paint on walls? Well, if I maybe. Maybe. I mean, and, I mean if and, and, weren't uh, so busy uh, programming children into becoming adults, but just let them be humans. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think they would, uh, you know, take whatever their their primitive beginnings of of painting on walls and become constructive with their painting on walls. Yeah. Uh, to, to me, it only makes sense because, uh, you know, they they get better as they practice doing it. And and mm -hmm. so it would, they they might be the next great artist of the world, or maybe the next Banksy. <laughs> How do you feel about graffiti artists? Oh, well, I guess it all depends where they're where they're graffitiing at. I mean, if, if they start doing graffiti on my garage door, I don't feel very good about them. But what if, if they did you a really neat piece of a uh, grim near the uh, the wise one, blah blah. Little uh, Viking. Yeah, thing. I don't, I don't, I don't need signage on my house. <laughs> you know if they, know. you know if they're doing, they're painting on like abandoned buildings or whatever. I'm great with that. That's fine. Uh, bridge, un, know you know, uh, freeway underpasses. Yeah, go ahead, paint there. You know, those, those are boring. Nothing to look at. So um, it was this cool um, street art artist from England way back and uh, he would uh, make graffiti with um, soap and he would go to all the freeways and he would wash up soap or uh, wash off dirt in these beautiful art pieces of flowers and trees and nature and all he did was lift off the dirt okay and and he got charged and uh, fined and and everything for graffiti because now they had to clean off the whole thing to get his um, Beautiful flowers and trees, though. Well, you know, fly, be beautiful yeah. things offend the state, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, step 15, the life goals I had before trauma had changed or gone entirely. I would say that's a dead, yeah. I would say that most of what schooling of children is, is to just beat down their life goals, <laughs> just beat them out of it. And and erase those and swap them with some pointless life goals. Yeah, you can't be a good clone if you have your own goals. No. Yeah, and, no. and that's that's what school, public schools are for, is to create yeah. to create massive amounts of clones that will all you know follow through doing the business as expected by by the state. Um, so. I would I would have way different life goals if I hadn't met adults in my um, childhood that just yelled and beat shit out of me. Okay. I wasn't beaten that up, but yelled at and just got programmed into yeah. That's that's I'm be, gonna, that's being oh. beaten down, being yelled at, yeah. That that's Yeah. I mean it's yeah. not physically the same, but it is mentally the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well step sixteen, thoughts or memories of trauma have come to me while I'm sleeping. Yes. Well you uh, are you bad dreams, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, just look at how much um I've dreamt about going to school. I've dreamt about uh, um, authority figures in my dreams. My, my dreams tend to be pleasant. 
So pleasant that good. sometimes I don't even want to wake up from him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to go with neutral on this one. Then. All right. Uh, I have struggled to get to sleep or to stay asleep. Not me personally. I'm I'm a A kind of person. A type. I go to bed when I'm sleepy and I fall asleep and then I wake up fresh. Yeah, I I have no problem sleeping. No. But if you look at the numbers, though, a lot of people have problems sleeping out in the in the greed based societies. V- Vinny is asking if you ever dreamt you went to school in your underwear. No. I did not. Well, I'm sure there were underwear on underneath the pants. <laughs> I, I had a reoccurring dream as a kid uh, about um, a princess that I would play with, and suddenly she turned mean, and then she ordered me to jump out of the window, and we were on, like, 10th floor. Okay. And then I had to because she was the princess. Did Did you have flying dreams? Uh, no. Not really. Oh, I used to have them all the time. They were awesome. Like mm-hmm. I, I could fly. I, I, it was weird. I wasn't like you know like like. I mean, I could I could just elevate straight up and then move. For, it wasn't like you know flying like Superman kind of kind of thing. But uh, you could just okay. I could I could just go wherever and 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 flying when I was a you know kid. Uh, those were great. Well, those... we scored we scored high. Okay. We well, scored a thirty nine out of fifty one. That. Um, so the world is suffering from PTSD, just as we said. Yeah. <laughs> Your results indicate that you are at high risk of suffering from PTSD. Oh, God. All right. You'll have to give me a link to that so I can put it in the blog. Okay. Um, I can even get you the results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't uh, personally uh, – no, I'm not a – I'm not a – PTSD sufferer, but I could tell them I I was if I wanted to get medical weed. <laughs> maybe you aren't compared to the norm, but what if the norm is slightly high on this? What if we're so used to living in a high state sense of alert and, uh, you know, what if we're used to just dealing, you know, being in trauma? Right. So we just... It, we're just constantly stressed out, but that's the norm. Well, I, I think that is the intention of uh, those that run everything, is to cause people to be constantly stressed out. Yeah. They they want you to be stressed out. Uh, much easier to control people that are that are that are in that kind of mode. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, if you're yeah. not, then then you're doing a good job of ignoring them. And if you are uh, at the norm or higher, uh, then you're probably paying far too much attention to what those status assholes have to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. My belief on it. Anyway, well, sadly, found yourself uh, kind of uh, depending on them. Right, right, and and that's that's a lot of people really. Yeah, they, they depend on getting their – it, it, it's like that old thing. When I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's, that's kind of the mode a lot of people are in is they're waiting for somebody to give them their opinion. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, uh, I can't anyway, feel, right? Yeah. Oh, Sat oh, here oh. hoping for orders to go kill somebody. Right. Right. Uh, anyway, we're out of time. Um, we'll be back next Monday, hopefully, with, uh, you know, barring uh, whatever technical issues. Uh, as how I was like kind of say. aiming for a 42 as the test results, so I think we failed. Well, not we. The world failed. Yeah. Or well, our, you're not our, a 42. Our, our view of the world failed. <laughs> it's only a 39. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so um, let's see. What's coming up this week? Uh, well, myself and Moose Girl will be on Thursday evening, 7 p.m., Eastern. Free your mind. With free your mind. Free your mind. Uh, yeah. And then on Friday is the the Vin E himself uh, doing American Dissonance at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. 
Uh, and don't forget his pre-tunications and post-tunications at times. Uh, so, so anyway, tune in to, to Vinny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Saturday is 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 the redneck dentist. Yeah, and uh, and so he'll be talking about something cool. I, I don't know what. Uh, Sunday is uh, myself in the morning with the blues, which is just the blues, really. It's not really much of me. Um, <laughs> it's just the blues. And then Hal Anthony at th- uh, 3 p.m. Eastern and 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 Gary L. And uh, hopefully Gigi's boo will be well and healthy again and be able to come in uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern with uh, the top 10 of, I think they're going to work on 1950 this year. So, uh, mm. yeah, that sounds cool. Um, I think that's all. You got anything else? No. Thank you, people, for listening. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been a great time. Uh, Hopefully you, it wasn't traumatizing. Yeah, if you got stress, then um, smoke some weed. <laughs> yeah, go, go sit under a tree. Talk to a goat. There you go. All right. Yeah. Peace.